Holding a conversation with a native speaker when you're a non-native speaker can be pretty daunting, scary, nerve-wracking. But holding a conversation with a native speaker that you don't know very well, perhaps an acquaintance, someone you know but not as a friend, maybe a colleague, or indeed it could be somebody you've never met before in your life. So, in today's lesson, I want to focus on 25 questions and short phrases, ways of answering when having a little bit of small talk. What is small talk? Well, as opposed to a full blown conversation, small talk is really about forming a rapport, building a connection, perhaps breaking the ice with someone new that you've just met, or indeed making new friends. Having a few topics that you feel comfortable talking about is a great way to help build your confidence and indeed engage in small talk. It doesn't always have to be completely scary. So let's have a look at 25 questions and phrases to help you feel more confident in those rather difficult and nerve wracking situations and to help develop your conversation skills. Now, before we get started, if you would like some real practical conversation experience and the chance to win a 60 minute lesson for free with a native English speaker, then why not learn more about Cambly, our partners in today's video. If you haven't already heard of Cambly, they're a fantastic way to help you develop and boost your language skills in English. In fact, they're an app where you can access real native English teachers dealing exclusively in teaching English. No other languages involved here. You can download the app on iOS or Android, or indeed you can use a web browser to access Cambly teachers. Now, the wonderful thing about Cambly is as it's online, you have got complete flexibility and control over your lessons. Whenever you want to study 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, that's right. I think you can even get a lesson at Christmas. Cambly is a great way to continue studying English, whether you want to study for 15 minutes a day or indeed an hour. Cambly can offer a package to suit your needs. And my favorite thing about the Cambly app, you can choose your teacher based on their interests. So you know you'll have something great to talk about. Don't forget, we've also got a special discount code for Love English viewers, leila sabra 10 where you can save 10% on a one month course, 19% on a three month course and 32% on a year's course, which actually works out to saving about four months for free. And don't worry too much. If at any point you decide you want to cancel with Cambly, your fees are fully refundable. You'll just be paying for the time you've used. Now, did I say something about having an hour's lesson with a Cambly teacher for free? I think I did. All you have to do to enter the competition is comment below. Use some of the conversation phrases that I give you, questions to ask me or indeed perhaps somebody else in the comments section about, well, any of the topics I'm going to discuss. So simply use these in a sentence in hopefully a conversation thread down below in the comment section and you will automatically be entered into the competition to win one hour free with a Cambly teacher. So if you want to learn more about Cambly, of course, go to the link below or you can just type in Cambly into your app store and you'll be able to download the app there. Right, let's get talking. Small talk, talking. So let's have a look by topic at some questions and phrases that you could use to guide you in your small talk conversation and hopefully encourage the other person to have a quick chat. These are safe questions, questions that won't offend or annoy anyone. Let's start with Britain's favorite topic, the weather. Now, traditionally in the UK, whether it's hot, cold, wet, dry, windy or not, we like to complain. And rather than make a question, we would usually start with, the weather's been. The weather's been rather hot lately. The weather's been so dull, meaning overcast, cloudy, dark, gloomy. 
The weather has been so wet. Can you believe the amount of rain we've had? The weather has been freezing. I'm really going to have to get a new pair of gloves. Now, of course, instead of saying the weather, you can say it. It's been. It's been rather hot lately. It's been whew, too hot for my liking, meaning too hot for what I would normally like. So the weather or it's. Once you use the adjective, you describe the weather we've been having, they will know what it means. It's not that unfamiliar. People will know. We use it to refer to the weather. A lovely expression, when it rains, as it often does in the UK. Whew, weather for ducks today. A nice sigh or exclamation might work quite well there. Rather than saying it's raining cats and dogs, which to be honest, guys, we really don't use very often. I don't think I ever use that idiomatic expression. We can say weather for ducks. So it's just a comment on how wet the weather is. Basically, the only creatures that would be enjoying the weather are the ducks. Of course, you can be a little bit more positive. Weather's been lovely recently, hasn't it? Add a question tag on the end there to encourage a response. Enjoying the weather we've been having lately? You can say, have you been enjoying the weather we've been having lately? However, you'll notice in many of these questions and statements, I will often omit, remove the auxiliary verb and the subject. When you're talking to the person, they know you're referring to them. Enjoying the weather we're having lately? You don't need to say, have you been enjoying the weather we're having lately? Not necessary, and in many of these statements and questions, you can simply omit the auxiliary verb. This is a more informal way of communicating in conversation, and indeed, in more informal emails, text messages, postcards, we often omit, remove the auxiliary verb and the subject. Now moving on, life, general life. Okay, we're not gonna get into specifics. We're not gonna start asking personal questions that people might feel uncomfortable answering. You're simply going to say, how's it going? How's it going? Or even, how's things? How's things? So that's inviting someone to either give a very vague response, oh, you know, the usual, or they might choose to go into more detail actually really good recently. I've just got a promotion at work. You never know how they're going to respond, but you want to give them the option of being vague. They might not want to get into a big conversation or indeed being a little bit more specific. Maybe they want to make more of a connection with you too. When you really don't know someone, then you could ask, so what do you get up to in your free time? So what do you get up to in your free time? Get up to is actually a more informal, colloquial way of saying, what do you do? What do you do in your free time? So this is a nice way to learn more about a person, their hobbies, their interests, where they've been, what they've done. Monday morning in the office, or indeed the Monday morning Zoom call, do you arrive a little bit early? You might find your boss is there or another colleague. You're on your own. You're waiting for everybody else to turn up. Bit awkward? Doesn't have to be. A little bit of small talk to pass the time, only five minutes if you're a little bit early, hopefully, will really help you break the ice, feel a bit more comfortable in the room with someone without having deadly silence. How was your weekend? Get up to much? Did you get up to much? You can see there where I'm omitting the verb, the auxiliary verb and the subject. You could also refer to more people if it's not just you on a one-on-one -on -one with someone. How was everyone's weekend? get up to much. Of course, again, you're inviting people to be as vague, unspecific as they like, or go into more detail. An example of a phrase you might use if you want to be more vague or not really interested in telling your boss or a colleague what you did at the weekend. Oh, you know, the usual, went for a walk, saw a movie, that kind of thing. Or number nine, you might say, didn't get up to much really, but I did. And there you can add something not very interesting, but just making an effort to give a response. Oh, the usual shows you're not making much effort in terms of having any small talk with the other person. So I think it is nice to try and share something about your weekend. Didn't get up to much really. Oh, but I did make a nice risotto. Yeah, Jamie Oliver recipe, really good. Now work. 
Obviously, it plays a big role in most of our lives, so we might want to share or ask questions about it. Again, we wouldn't ask about money or promotions unless that's volunteered, so we want to keep it quite vague, general. How are things going at the office? How are things going at the office? Everything okay at work? Everything okay at work? Now, when you don't know someone at all, then you might want to ask them what their job is. Now, we don't say, what's your occupation? What job do you have? It sounds very strange, a bit too direct. Instead, we would say, what do you do? What do you do? Or what is it you do? What is it you do? A little bit more formal there. I'm a, I'm a teacher at a university. I'm a teacher at a university. Or you could say, if you want to be more vague, you don't want to tell them exactly your job or you have a really weird, complicated job, you could say, actually, I work in finance. I work in finance. I work in education. So talk about the industry you work in rather than the specific job you have. Now, you could follow that up with a statement like, oh, sounds interesting. Oh, wow, lovely. Or you might want to follow it up with a brief question. Oh, wow. Do you enjoy that then? Do you enjoy that then? So again, encouraging them to talk, but not pushing them to share anything too personal. Now, travel is often a great topic to choose when you want to talk to a colleague or an acquaintance. Have you been anywhere nice recently? Have you been anywhere nice recently or been anywhere nice recently? Remember, omitting the auxiliary verb and the subject is often a more informal, quicker, faster way to ask your question and it's just more natural, more colloquial English. I've just got back from, I've just got back from London. Had a lovely weekend. Actually, I went to Spain last month. Wonderful weather, fantastic food, really nice beaches. So add something to it. Tell them something small. Talk about the weather, the food, the people, whatever it might be. But if you have been somewhere recently, then tell them something. Again, it's about offering some information, but not telling them everything about yourself. You don't need to tell them about the whole week's holiday. They're probably not going to be that interested. Now, if you haven't been anywhere recently, which for many of us at the moment is probably quite true, then you could simply say, no, unfortunately not, but I am looking at booking a holiday to wherever it might be. Now, another great topic, entertainment. Okay, no, it doesn't have to be singing, dancing, all that stuff. Simply talk about a little bit of TV. Netflix is a great thing to talk about. So many of us are watching Netflix documentaries, series at the moment, that it works quite nicely to actually tell someone about what you've been watching and maybe even make recommendations. Seen anything good on Netflix recently? Seen anything good on Netflix recently? Have you seen anything good on Netflix recently? You can change the adjective good, interesting, entertaining, informative. You can use a different adjective, but good is nice and general. 19. Actually, yes, there was this brilliant documentary about, or there was this great film about, and what you could add to that? It's worth a watch or it's worth watching. You choose, it's worth a watch or it's worth watching. So what have I been watching on Netflix recently? Uh, the Crown, okay, definitely worth a watch, but it's actually had a lot of criticism in the news recently because it's not actually factually accurate. So a lot of people are taking it as a documentary, whereas it's more a work of fiction. So the poor royal family, not particularly happy with Netflix at the moment, but it's definitely worth a watch. Now, the last two topics, possibly my favourite, food and pets. And don't get the two confused, that could be a bit messy. So talking about food is a nice way just to have a general bit of small talk. Perhaps talking about a restaurant you visited recently, making a recommendation or even a recipe you've cooked. Been anywhere nice to eat recently? Have you been anywhere nice to eat recently? You could just start with a statement. I went to a great little Chinese, Thai, Italian, restaurant the other day. Fantastic pizza. You'd love it. I tried this amazing recipe the weekend. Tequila chicken. The wife was very impressed. So again, talking with a colleague or an acquaintance, someone you might know about food is probably an easier topic than someone you don't know. Unless, of course, they're asking for a recommendation. Do you know any nice restaurants around here? Then perhaps it would work. Now pets. The British love their pets. 
If you follow us on Instagram, you'll know how crazy I am about my cats, Millie and Maya. And of course, Sabra has a gorgeous, if not a little bit short, dog, Frodo, who she adores. And he is very cute, very handsome. So if you are interested in talking about pets, if you know your colleague has a dog or a cat or a rabbit or a pet alligator, whatever it might be, then you might ask about them. If you know their name, how's Fluffy? How's Alfie doing? Or if you don't know their name, how's that crazy, cute, little cat of yours, dog of yours, rabbit of yours, hamster of yours, budgie of yours? So ask a general question about their pet. Hopefully their pet's still alive, it hasn't had any disastrous accidents, so there won't be a problem to have a little bit of small talk about your pets. And that's it. Quite a few topics I hope will help you have a conversation with someone, a nice general chit chat, a little bit of small talk, and of course, boost your conversation skills. So remember, if you'd like to be entered into the competition with Camberley, do make sure you comment below using some of these questions or expressions. I will reply. Let's see if we can have a little short interactive conversation on YouTube in the comments section. And I will choose the best conversation, the person who's used these questions and phrases most accurately and with most creativity, let's say, and let you know in the next month. So don't forget, do check out Cambly, go to your app store or the link below. Don't forget to use our code layla sabra 10 to save on those amazing courses they have on offer and help boost your English with a Cambly teacher. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you very soon. Bye.